All right, Captain. Let's go. It's hard to explain to people who are not familiar with us who don't care about it why we spend so much time staring at the water and, and the heat and the wind. Because there's always something going on around you. And I'm at an age and stage of my life, I'm a little worried about joining new things, but this one has really worked out well. Hey, little buddy, three hour tour? <laughs> See them? Right on the point of the dark spot there? Oh, right here? Big guy coming up, all right. He's out here. Oh yeah, I see him, I see him. Pound for pound, the bonefish are the strongest fish in the sea. They evolved this speed and power to escape from predators. And once an angler fools a bonefish into taking a fly, well, the real game is on. Just like that, just like that, shoot it out. Yeah, right there, right there, shoot it now. Perfect, nice, tripped it. Nice big bonefish. Look at the size of that one. Trip, trip, trip. We got him. We got him. There you go. There you go. When you make a great cast, it is rewarding beyond my ability to describe it because they grab it and bang, they're gone. On the reel, and you got him, mister. There you go, Mr. B. Get him. Ooh, look at that. Nice fish. Good fish. That's a good fish. <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta rub his nose so he forgets all about it, right? Okay, see ya. You know, it's the first time I've had a chance to, to bone fish with Tom, and so to see him hook up, make a nice cast, hook up, get that fish to the boat, to me it's emblematic of what fishing is all about. When you fish or you hunt with somebody, you create a bond that's very different than, say, playing golf or playing tennis. It's just a different deal, and you got to experience it to really understand that, I think. You know, I keep thinking that God is going to tap me on the shoulder and say, that's over. We can't have you doing that anymore. That's too good. But it's, uh, it's been really rewarding. 400 years ago, English buccaneers sailed into the waters of Belize. They called themselves baymen and lived off the land and sea, taking what they wanted. Hey. Now there are new buccaneers. They have come to Belize for adventure, but also to discover a way to preserve the source of that adventure so that buccaneers to come today and in the generations that follow will know what the world of the flats was like because it will still be there. 11 o'clock, about 50 feet, moving to the left. Slow. You got it. To me, the future is worrisome. I just don't think people are really taking it seriously enough. And I think it's blatantly obvious this is everything. When I say this, I mean everything has got to be protected. See something sitting right there, right there, chasing a fly. You got him, I got him. Let him run. Oh, you're breaking my home. The preservation of habitat and wildlife is often put into terms of our own self-interest. And even though we inhabit far different realms, the destinies of bonefish, tarpon, and permit, and of ours, are indeed linked. I love that sound. And that is what compelled concerned anglers and guides to found the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust in the late 1990s. They saw that if they hoped to go on enjoying the sport they loved, they needed to work for the fish that were the source of that sport, something that Bill Klein, as a prominent member of BTT, knows well. These fish are great uh, canary in a coal mine, so to speak. So when something starts to go wrong with them, suddenly there's this domino effect that you know something's going to happen with the rest of our resource. The average fisherman has to understand that you know if he loves his sport, it's time that we have to realize he has to start giving something back. So a couple fish moving up here, coming back up your way. Well, you look at what we're doing in saltwater. There's a lot of programs going on, whether you're a trout fisherman, steelhead fisherman, bass fisherman. There we go. I think it's very important that we want to make sure we protect uh, and have a sustainable fishery resource in the future. This is important for people to see and realize what you know, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust is doing. You know, the scientific aspect of what they're doing actually will help them better understand their fish and their habitat. One of the reasons, and we always get this question, why are you tagging bonefish? And the number one is to figure out what are the movement patterns of bonefish. We don't know, for example, if you catch a bonefish at a certain key, is that bonefish always going to live around that key or is it going to move somewhere else? Each tag has a three-letter code, and it's got two websites where people recapture that fish. They can get on that website and report the recapture for us and help out with science. To get a tag in him, I think he knows it's coming. When we put it into the fish, where the dorsal fin comes down, there's bones that come into the muscle. We're putting that into the bone, so that little dart sticks in there, and it sticks pretty well. All right, he's gone. There he is. Bye. 
We know more about a lot of things than we know about our oceans, and tarpon, bonefish, and permit are included in that. Tarpon especially, they're long-lived, up to 80 years. They take 10 years or so to become sexually mature, and those types of species are the ones, just like sharks, uh, that are most susceptible to, uh, to impacts, overfishing or habitat loss. So if we start to see a loss of tarpon, for example, or bonefish, which also live a long time, over 20 years, then we've got serious problems. If you're out there fishing for these fish, then you are one of the participants. If you want to make sure that you have that day in the future, you've got to become involved, regardless of what method that you choose. It all matters. Turner Flats owner Craig Hayes makes his living off of the big three, but his concerns include all living creatures that inhabit the flats surrounding his lodge. And he's out to protect and save them, even if it's only one species at a time. A big part of Turner Flats these days is conservation. And one of our first major efforts was uh, getting uh, catch and release protection uh, established in Belize. The other resorts in Belize really helped with that. And everybody got together, Belize River Lodge and El Pescador and the people down south, the Garbets and so on, to, to really push that forward. And it's really a landmark law. Nobody can kill them. The general population in, in Belize is quite aware that uh, bonefish, permit, and tarpon are very important to their economy. We found that, that those three species are worth $60 million a year to the country of Belize. The fate of these prized flats and key species require international conservation. And it's a matter that cannot be limited to pure environmentalists, but is something that will have an effect on business and industry as well. That is why entrepreneurs such as Patagonia founder Yvon Chouinard are involving themselves in the preservation of habitat and species. Well, if you're a fisherman, you really care. They're all important. I think we got to get people scared to death of losing the planet before they move. I'm going to do what I can so that I'm part of the solution, not part of the problem. Saving the planet is number one. Like David Brower said, there's no business to be done on a dead planet. There's also no religion to be done on a dead planet. Manatee. E.O. Wilson says we're going through the sixth great extinction. 12,000 species are going extinct every year. Starting with the big species, well, guess what? We're a large species. The best thing anglers can do for the fishery is always to practice a true conservation ethic. This can be seen in catch and release fishing, and even more by the use of barbless hooks and careful handling of a caught fish by keeping it in the water when releasing it. This all adds up to leading by example. The bitter lesson brought home to the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust is that human interference can impact a fishery for generations. The evidence is irrefutable and the decline of the large predators, such as sharks, down to the zooplankton upon which bait feed. For bonefish, the concern is with pollution and the loss of food. And the first corrective step is changing the minds of anglers and the public about these fish by creating an understanding of what these fish mean to the environment, the spreading of knowledge being the greatest tool. Going to the right, going to the right. Right there, right there, drop it right there. Perfect, perfect, that's good. What's so fun about it for me is the chance to fish with Tom Brokaw. He's become a friend over these years. We've hunted together since in South Dakota. We've gone to his place in Montana. He really cares about the planet. He's done an awful lot to support the planet through conservation causes, lending his voice, lending his media outreach. It's such a great sport, and so much of the economy depends on it that I'm pleased to do whatever I can to help it. Spread again on the dark, spread again. Yeah, I see. Yeah, see that lone fish coming out? As soon as that great fish is out there, you make a nice cast, you hook up. I mean, it's just such a completion of a really rewarding experience. There we go! You got him, you got it, you got it. At that moment, you're hooked. I mean, there's just no fish like a bonefish. And if you can do it with beautiful surroundings around you, and it's pretty darn hard to beat. Coming to you, coming to you. <laughs> oh, you know, that mango. You tangle up in there. I'll get it off, I'll get it off. I'm not sure if we go to get this fish here. <laughs> there you go. Nice fish. All right, man. Sweet! That is bonefish there, oh. mister. That is bonefish. <laughs> All right. Beautiful, aren't they? Woo, that was fun. I tell you what, watching you cast to those monster bones, man, what a day, huh?
Tom just loves to fly fish. Even as many years as he's been doing this, you know, like the rest of us, gets bitten as soon as that great fish is out there. Those kinds of moments of just sharing sheer enthusiasm and euphoria with the people you like the most. At the end of the day, fishing is just about having fun. If you can't have fun fishing, boy, try something else.